In this discussion, we're going to talk about real-time versus interrupt computing systems. So real-time programming is programming with what's called deadlines. So when there is an input to the system or um, a real-time constraint, if you will, um, let's say it's an embedded medical system for someone who is type 1 diabetic and it's the pump that attaches to their body. And their constant glucose monitoring system says, this guy needs insulin now. If that system decides, eh, I'll get around to it. I'm busy connected in the internet right now. The guy could be in medical distress. Okay? So a real-time system needs to react now. It's got to meet its deadlines. So if it's got to do something when a certain event or interrupt or signal occurs, it's got to do it. Okay? That's it. It's real time. It must happen. Regardless of what else the system has to do, if it's a real time system, it must meet its deadlines. And in some cases, those are critical. Okay? And we'll talk about some of the examples. Fly by wire. An airplane that is fly by wire. If I take the yoke or the stick and say, I need to turn right, and the plane goes, eh, I'll get around to it. I might be turning right to avoid another aircraft that doesn't see me. Okay? Fly by wire, I put an input in, it's got to react now. The deadline is now. You've got two milliseconds to respond because in a, in, in a mechanical system, I would turn a yoke and the cables would take two milliseconds to flip. So you've got two milliseconds, right? Or whatever it happens to be in fly by wire, it's got to be now. Okay, you've got to give me the response that I need. Okay, can't afford a blue screen of death in an airplane. All right, analog brakes. I hit the brakes, they need to work. The anti-lock system needs to work or I might skid across an intersection and hit somebody. Okay, anything that can be considered mission critical. Okay, if I'm tracking incoming missiles and I'm trying to defend my base, that system better be able to, it sees a missile coming in, it better react appropriately, the radar better come up, sweep, find it, and launch the missile to defeat that missile properly. Misses the deadline, people die. Okay? So critical, mission critical systems are what we're talking about with real-time programming. So the responsiveness is despite any load on the system. You've got to create the system so that no matter what else is going on, those mission critical things have the priority and get executed and meet their deadline, period. Okay? And we're talking milliseconds or microseconds, okay? We're talking really, really fast response times. It's got to be a guaranteed response. You got to know that it's not going to crash. And you can see why these go through years and years and years and years of testing. And you can see why the Boeing issue is a big deal. Okay. When that 737 MAX had all those problems. Okay. They're going to take apart that software and make sure that that mission critical system has any of those bugs removed. And they're going to verify it. And they're going to re-verify it. And the, F the FAA should go in and re-re-verify it. Okay. That's why it's taking months, if not years, to get that fixed. Okay? Guaranteed response. Now, there's three categories of what a real-time system can require. Okay? And a hard system means if you miss a deadline, it's total failure. That's an airplane system. Okay? That's a missile defense system. Okay? That's a safety of life system. Okay? Those have to have, you've got to make the deadlines or something catastrophic is going to happen. A firm system, if you miss a deadline, that result is zero. So you probably have to either recalculate or do something dramatic because that result is zero and your quality of service has gone down. But if it's infrequent, it can tolerate one or two, probably because it's got a backup response. Okay? So you could build a system where Okay, if this happens less than one time a month, it's okay. It's not good, right? 
but I can work around it. Okay. Now, if it's listed as a soft system, it means I really want to hit my deadlines, but this is not life or death stuff. So it's just going to be a downgraded system and we'll try to address what those things are with updates. Okay. So it's a real time system. Nobody's going to die. The stock market's not going to crash. Um, you know, whatever. It's not catastrophic. It's not great. We don't like it. It's supposed to work, but it's not the end of the world. So we'll fix it. Okay. That's a soft system in real time. Okay. Now, we compare that to interrupt programming. And interrupt programming is what I call normal programming. You know, when the user clicks this menu, I'm gonna go do this. And the computer is spending most of its life waiting, right? I'm gonna type in some names and it's gonna sort them, put them in a database and file them as my new clients, okay? There's nothing real time about it. I, I wanted to do what I wanted to do when I wanna do it, but it's not like I'm suddenly going to fall over because my medical device fails, right? It's, it's based on interrupts it's, and it's usually user driven or software driven, okay? When I create a bug that I didn't catch in my code and the program crashes, okay, the computer is going to come back and either throw an exception or handle the exception um, with software interrupts. Okay, and like I said, it's mouse moves, keyboard input, or events that are handled by event or interrupt handlers. So if something goes wrong, the interrupt stack kicks in and says, okay, this was an error, this was the error code, here's the error handler for that, here's how the software's gonna downgrade gracefully, or the software didn't downgrade gracefully, so here's where the operating system's gonna kick it out and send an error message, okay, which is, we didn't write good code to begin with, but you see what I'm saying. This is all not life or death, not real time. It's just programs running on your computer. Okay. Now interrupts can be used in real time systems. Okay. I can be flying along and if my left engine catches fire, okay. And I'm going to fly by wire system. I may want that left engine to automatically shut itself down or alert me to shut it down, depending on how the system works, okay? And automatically, if it's a really large airplane, maybe it starts feeding in the rudder I need to control my track through the air so that I don't get into some sort of an asymmetric power situation when I'm trying to deal with snakes in the cockpit and all the, all the issues I have because one of my engines is on fire, okay? So, there are things that a real-time system can sense or have interrupts thrown from various sensors that can cause the real-time system to take other additional actions for me or to at least have an alert system to me based on those interrupts, okay? So that's where you get a little commonality because interrupts can be used in real-time systems or regular programming systems. Okay. Threads and multitasking involve interrupts all the time. When I launch a separate thread to run in parallel with the thread I'm currently on, I'm gonna use interrupts because it's gonna come back and say, okay, this thread you started, it's done. Here's the result. Where's the method you want me to launch now that I'm back, okay? And so all of those are software interrupts that get, get handled. Um, and bugs throw traps or exceptions, okay, traps, the processor says, hey, knucklehead, you tried to divide by zero here. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to go handle that over here. Okay, and give the error to the user. Okay, or an exception that I'm going to throw for other errors of memory access or index out of bounds. And then your software needs to handle that error as well. Okay. So that is interrupt programming. And that is the eighth video we've got in this series. There will be more, but for now, I think we've given you a good overview of a lot of the terminology we're going to use when we start working on the robots. So the next videos I put in this channel are going to involve some of the programming techniques of our robot. So if you like what you're seeing, even if you're not in my classes, subscribe to this channel, keep checking back, and as we add these videos, 
you'll get to see this guy come to life. It's pretty cool, and I will see you on the other side.